The earliest fish lacked ribs. The earliest sharks lacked ribs, although later shark lineages could develop them. And the transitional forms between uh, cartilaginous fish and bony fish, the acanthodians, also lacked ribs. It was the bony osteichthyan fish which evolved the ribs homologous to the tetrapod ribs, and some fish possess two pairs of ribs coming from each vertebra. Early amphibians varied in the size of their ribs, but in many lineages they were small, as they are in salamanders today and in frogs. In the most primitive frogs alive today, the ribs are not fused to the uh, vertebrae, um, but in the majority of frogs, they have fused to form single structures. A number of fossil amphibians and ancestral amniotes possessed lengthened ribs, and thus not only did the ribs offer protection for thoracic organs, but the muscles between the ribs, the intercostals, could change the volume of the thorax by moving the ribs, and this allowed amniotes to breathe much more efficiently than modern amphibians, which still uh, depend on respiration through their skin to a large degree. In ancestral amniotes, there was no distinction between thoracic and lumbar sections of the vertebral column. All bore ribs. In different amniote lineages, the vertebral column and thorax could be modified. So for example, in turtles, the broadened ribs and vertebrae fuse to dermal bones to help form the shell. In snakes, the number of vertebrae are greatly increased, and there are fossil snakes with almost 500 vertebrae. In birds, uh, the first birds were poor flyers, but later lineage, lineages modified the thorax and developed a prominent process on the sternum, a keeled sternum for muscle attachment, which made them much better flyers. The earliest ribs had two heads, which is why the fusion of a rib of this type to a vertebra can produce a hole like the transverse foramen in cervical vertebrae in mammals. Later ribs could be modified, and so uh, that two-headed ancestral form is no longer evident in mammalian ribs. The spinous process attaches muscles which can move the arm and neck, and therefore different lineages have modified the size of this process. It has become longer in elephants to support the weight of the massive head and was lengthened in a number of dinosaurs. Why it reached such extreme lengths in some prehistoric animals to form a sail is not completely known, but it may have helped with thermoregulation increasing the surface area of the back, allowing an animal to warm up faster in the sun and to cool down faster if a wind was blowing. Sails were observed in theropod meat-eating dinosaurs, in sauropods, in ornithischian dinosaurs, the ornithopods, and arose separately in pelicosaur uh, mammal-like reptiles in both plant-eating and meat-eating forms. Enlarged thoracic vertebrae were also observed in stegosaurs as a support for the bony plates on their back, and hollow cavities known as pleuroceles evolved in sauropods to lighten the vertebral column. Because of the higher metabolism which evolved in mammals, in addition to the enlarged brain size and upright body stance, mammals needed to uh, take in more oxygen than their reptilian ancestors. And one of the modifications which evolved was the loss of the ribs in the lower thoracic cage, creating a difference between the thoracic vertebrae 
which bore ribs, and lumbar vertebrae in the lower back, which did not. And because lumbar vertebrae lacked ribs, the diaphragm muscles, which only mammals possess, could push down on abdominal organs so that they protrude, thus uh, lengthening uh, the lungs, allowing it to take in more oxygen each breath. And so the distinction between thoracic and lumbar vertebrae is a mammalian feature tied to the support for the higher metabolic rate and greater brain size. During embryonic development, uh, lumbar ribs can form, which then fuse to the vertebrae uh, to form uh, enlarged transverse processes. The sternum evolved in the earliest tetrapods and has been modified in different lineages. So the keeled sternum in modern birds is an adaptation for enlarged flight muscles. In mammals, it is composed of a series of elements, as in this mink. In humans, it is composed of the manubrium, body, and xiphoid process.